It's been a month since I planted the tiny chestnuts that I took out of the refrigerator in these small pots, and this is a very special morning because I'm going to be moving this one into a larger pot. So I thought I'd make a video to show you this very simple operation, but I wanted to focus on what it means to me. As you can see, I'm getting my hands dirty, and that's half the fun. Anyone who helps growing things knows what this feeling is all about. It's a feeling of connection to the earth and the life that it gives to all of us. And for me, obviously with the chestnut, it goes much deeper than that because my efforts are aimed at helping this species to recover from the brink of extinction. In fact, if you look at any of the popular information sources, they'll tell you that the American chestnut species is, quote, functionally extinct, unquote. Actually, let me interrupt myself for a moment here to show to talk about those roots. As you can see, this little baby was already pot-bound. But not anymore. Now she's going to have lots of room in that larger pot to spread her roots further and get even stronger and bigger before being planted outside. Once it gets warm enough, it's still March. It's much too early to plant this tree outside. Nothing else has their leaves yet. And so, as I was saying, the American chestnut is not functionally extinct. That is wrong. Because here's the living proof. This is the baby that came from a chestnut that was dropped by the Miracle Sisters tree. This is her child. So, as you can see, the species is doing just fine, thank you very much, at least in my forest. And, actually, this particular specimen is going to be planted in a forest nearby. In fact, just across the road and down a little ways. And so, these are spreading. The feeling it gives me to help this species is immeasurable. It's incomparable. It's such a beautiful feeling, taking part in life, in the life of nature, and in the life that it gives to all of us. I've skipped past some of the footage where I was watering it and then adding more soil, and then, as we're seeing now, adding more water. I've got the pot inside of a pail so that I can just keep watering it and watering it and watering it some more and letting that water run through the soil so that it becomes completely saturated. That way, those exposed roots that we saw won't be shocked because exposure to air, just drying the roots, kills them. It's not going to happen immediately, but it happens fairly quickly. So, this is the perfect safeguard just to keep that pot saturated probably for a good day or two. And then it'll be time to take it out of the pail and let it dry out. Not completely dry, obviously, but not be saturated. The last thing we want to do is drown this little baby. But in the meantime, it's definitely going to be taking a good 24 or 48 hour bath. <laughs> and here we go, another shot of water. I feel extremely fortunate to be in this position to help this species and to take care of these trees and watch them grow. One day, perhaps I'll even be able to eat some of these nuts, but I'm not growing them just to eat the nuts. In fact, I'm not growing them to eat the nuts at all. I'm just trying to do my part to help this beautiful tree to reclaim its former glory as 
one of the principal hardwoods that grows here in southern Ontario. The success that I've had leaves me bewildered when I see negative comments from people who presumably don't understand much about the chestnut and what I'm doing here. Because it's kind of strange, isn't it, to argue against success? I don't think that I'm going to be sharing as many chestnut videos anymore. And I'm just going to share ones that I'm hoping will not be subject to strange comments from negative people. Because the last thing I want to do with this channel is to discourage people. So please, if you read the comments, take them with a grain of salt. Just look at this beautiful tree. Just another example of what I do year in and year out, adding more chestnuts to the forest and extending beyond.